Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Friday Focus Show. I'm Blair Shade alongside University Daily Kansan football beat writers Dan Harms and Stella Lang and Shane Jackson. This week we will preview this upcoming game against number 16 uh, Oklahoma State. But first, we will look back and recap KU's loss against West Virginia where they lost 33-14. to Not many strong performances in that game, but guys, is there anything to take away from that game? Well, Trevor Pardula punted the ball 14 times, so he got a lot of work on Saturday. Um, offensively, again, we sound like a broken record, but a lot of struggles. Not able to run the ball, not able to throw the ball, not able to do really anything. <laughs> and then uh, you look on the defensive side of the football, and you know, holding West Virginia to 33 points is respectable. There's no doubt, but there were still a lot of issues with when it comes to broken tackles and. The defensive backs absolutely refuse to turn around and, and they're always face guarding and that leads to penalties sometimes. So a lot of issues to address, but one thing that I was very encouraged about, Corey Avery scored late in that game and who's the first guy over there to pat him on the, on the helmet? Clint Bowen. And he gives this team a lot of energy and I think it's his first game at Memorial Stadium this week should be a good sign. Obviously, on the offensive side, um, I think it was important that the quarterbacks were, you know, rotated in a little bit just to see what each of them could do. And on the defensive side, you know, they gave up their points in the first half, but um, Jacory Shepard and Dexter McDonald again in the secondary, they shut down the receivers, Kevin White, um, in the second half, and I think that was encouraging. It's a new week, but it's the same story. Offense is still struggling, defense has been doing well. You know, again, West Virginia, it's just a respectful performance. It may have been one of their worst performances all year, but it's, it's still a respectful performance. That just shows how good this defense mm -hmm. is. And what we, we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but these offenses are very similar between West Virginia and Oklahoma State. So that's signs of encouragement. I, I really do I agree with Dan. I really liked how Bone was, showed energy. The players seemed to be energized for him. And that in, in itself says a lot and why he would be a good candidate for this coaching job. So I, I, I'm looking forward to that. I want to see how this team you know, really performs underneath him. Well, is there anything that the Jayhawks did on Saturday that could help them against Oklahoma State this upcoming Saturday? It's a really tough question. Um, just playing those full four quarters, though, because, I mean, Ed, you may not get the win against Oklahoma State this week, but in games against Iowa State, and you thought TCU, but uh, that might not be the case. But there might be some games later on in the season where if you play a full four quarters, any, I mean, anything can happen in college football. But I was encouraged. They won the second half 14-7. The only touchdown they gave up was on a special team's kick return so uh, the defense de definitely stepped it up in the second half. Um, echoing Dan, I think they really competed hard. Um, Corey Avery, he, um, you know, DeAndre Mann went out early and Corey Avery played all four quarters and he showed that he could carry the load if needed. Um, also Nick Harwell, you know, he had that late touchdown, showed that he didn't give up even though he hasn't been having the greatest season. Yeah, it, I mean, the strong suit coming in this year was the defense on the defense side of the ball. And you're asking, the question is, can there anything you can take away positive? Well, the only thing you could take away was either Pardula's performance or the defense performance. So you have to take, with the defense carrying it over against Oklahoma State, an offense that's very similar. I, you know, that's, that in itself talks about, you know, this week, I think you can carry that over. All right, great segue into this upcoming match against number 16, Oklahoma State. The Cowboys are ranked in the top 25 in scoring, scoring 39 points a game but their defense is allowing 24, 25 points a game, excuse me. But at the same time, the Jayhawks haven't scored over 20 points in only one of their games this year. Again, and that was against SEMO. So before they can focus on Oklahoma State guys, they'll have to focus on themselves. Because at the beginning of the week that you guys know, there's a QB controversy going mm -hmm. on within the program after uh, Montel Cozart was pulled in halftime against West Virginia. So who do you guys think should be able to lead this team on Saturday? Well, first off, I think like just calling it a controversy, is it might be a little strong because this is actually might be good for Kansas football because when you see a quarterback who's going out there and struggling week after week after week and he, you know, they keep throwing him out there and getting his number called, that could lead to some issues on the sidelines, you know. But now that it's, the, the position's been opened up and Bowen has been talking about all, all these past couple of weeks, you earn your playing time and there, you know, that's it. And so whoever performs best in practice, I, I'm going to go with Michael Cummings because he's the veteran. But I, whoever performs best in practice is going to get the playing time. 
Um, I'm also going to go with Michael Cummings. I think that, you know, Kozar has been said to be the best quarterback on the team, but, you know, during games he hasn't been able to show that. And Cummings, he at least brings some consistency to the offense. He can complete those, you know, the short passes, the things to get the offense rolling. So I think that he deserves his chance. So both of you guys are going with redshirt junior Michael Kozar. Shane? I'm going to be different. I'm going to say it's Montel Kozart because, like Stella just said, he is the best quarterback on this roster. And that's not Bowen's fault. That's not Kozart's fault. That goes down to Weiss. It was the reason why Kozart's the best quarterback because you didn't recruit a better quarterback. So go with your best guy. Don't let this be the third consecutive year that you're going with a backup quarterback that didn't start in a season opener. Kozart's a young quarterback, sophomore, and this is a learning experience. You know, all year long we heard about how, you know, how good this guy, kid can be and how much confidence they had in him since spring ball when they named him the starting quarterback. Well, why don't you stick to your guts, what you said at the beginning of the year, all the way back in spring, you know, stick to it and ride them out for the rest of the year. And staying on the offensive side of the ball, the Kansas wide receivers are the biggest weapons that the Kansas has on their offensive, offensive unit. Can the Kansas wide receivers give the Oklahoma State any uh, problems throughout the game? There's one weak point on this Oklahoma State defense. It's definitely in the secondary. They've, they're young and they've had some injuries this year that they've had to face. So you would think that this that would be the best opportunity for Kansas to get things going is through the air but like we said that's scary it's scary proposition because things have not been going well and uh, so yeah you got to get things going on the run on the ground obviously to get things going but you got you got to go deep at some point and Kansas has got to come through um, also, you know, going off Oklahoma State secondary, you know, Blair and I were talking about it earlier. I really think that Nick Harwell might be having a breakout game. You know, he, he's shown flashes of what he's been able to do. He had two touchdowns in the opener. And I think that, you know, I think he has potential to do something great. Yeah, if there is a weakness on this team, it is a secondary for Oklahoma State. You want to take advantage of that. But the problem is, is getting the ball to them. As we've talked about, you know, the quarterback is the issue. But I think another story that keeps getting talked about every week is how Tony Pearson is not utilized enough. Mm -hmm. And this week they said they want to get him the ball more, whether that's in, you know, in screen passes or getting it out of the backfield. But you've got to get him involved. And I think that will be the best you know, for KU this weekend. And transitioning to the Kansas defensive side of the ball, before the season starts and actually throughout the season, everyone was saying the strong suit on, in this Kansas football program is the defense. But the numbers doesn't say that. The numbers say that they've given up 23 or more points in four of their five first games. What is about this Kansas football team that the defense needs to turn it around and actually help this team win on Saturday? Well, you have to remember what conference that, that Kansas is playing in right now, and that's the Big 12, and they score a lot of points. So, um, and then w when you're at a disadvantage because your offense can't do anything and you're on the field all the time, uh, it's, it's a tough task for Kansas defense to keep KU in football games. Um, as far as like doing things better, you know, you, Kansas has been taking some risks because I think that there might be some pressure on them to actually score some points because the offense can't do anything. So you might want to settle down a little bit, wrap up, you know, instead of making those big plays because sometimes it goes the other way. The defense has been asked to do a lot. Um, you know, they have given up the big plays sometimes, they have been penalized a couple times, but I think um, given how much time they've had to play on the field, that they, you know, actually done a good job holding opponents to a lower scoring than, you know, what could have happened. That and not to mention with a struggling offense, they're not in the best field position. You saw in that Texas game, you know, Texas started with, on all their scoring drives, in their territory, in Kansas territory. So as a defense standpoint, there's not much you can do. They had a respect performance, they've had respect performances all year. It's now up to the offense to so at least get them in better field position. And what is a matchup to look for that the defense could take advantage of the Oklahoma State offense? I think it would have to start with the quarterback, uh, Dax, Dax Garman. He's coming in and he, uh, he's kind of an enigma at quarterback. He, he's more accurate with his cannon than he is with his pistol, pardon the pun, Pistol Pete. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's definitely, he throws the ball downfield with a lot of vigor, and, but, but things are sometimes tough in the intermediate passes. So if Kansas is going to take advantage of that, it's going to be forcing Oklahoma State to make those tough short yardage completions. Um, I think the defense really needs, starting with the defensive line, they really need to keep control of running back Desmond Rowland. He, um, you know, this is senior year. He's one, of, he's one of the only veteran players on this Oklahoma State offense. And, you know, Kansas actually has been doing a pretty decent job of holding um, of, uh, running games in check. So I think um, they need to keep him. Kansas' strong suit has been their secondary this year, and it was talked about before the year. So the matchup I always look for is the opposing receiver. This, this week we got Tyreek Hill, a junior receiver out of Garden City Community College, 
had 278 all-purpose yards mm -hmm. against Florida State, and he just does it all. He's, he's a speed, speedy guy. He won the 200-meter dash indoor Big 12 title just one month after being on campus. So I think if Kansas can contain him, they got a good shot this weekend. Okay, guys, it's that time of show where we give our predictions on the outcome of this weekend's game. Dan, what do you think? Well, uh, last, last year in Oklahoma at Stillwater, Kansas was trailing 7 to nothing on the very first play of the game, and that wound up being the game-winning touchdown because Kansas <laughs> only scored six points, and they lost 42-6. to six. So it's going to have to start on the offensive side of the football. Don't think, you know, whether it's, you know, all three quarterbacks play or if one quarterback plays, they're going to have to get some sort of production, consistent production. I don't think they will get enough, but it's going to be a kind of a weird game. The Royals are playing at the same time. Late night is the night before, and if you are expecting a fluky performance, this might be the week. So I'm gonna, but I, but I still think Oklahoma State's too much. I'm gonna go 35 to 10, somewhere around that range. But Kansas is definitely uh, gonna play better than they have in the first couple of weeks. The Oklahoma State offense really hasn't missed a beat from the past few seasons, and Oklahoma State really has Kansas's number. I mean, there was a shutout a couple years ago, I think. And so with the offense in flux like this for KU, I just don't see them pulling off the upset. And I think that um, Oklahoma State will win it 35-7. to seven. I'm also going to say Oklahoma State wins. I just think Kansas' offense is struggling too much. I do think their defense is going to play up to what we expect them to play. I'm saying Oklahoma State wins 31-7. From the past, we've seen that the Kansas offense really hasn't been able to put up points that they're supposed to in the beginning of the season. So my outcome is 42-7 to because Kansas can just not stick with this high-powered Oklahoma State offense. And thanks for joining us on this edition of the Friday Focus Show. For more Kansas coverage, please attend to Kansan.com.